President Biden has assured us that he has 51 votes in the Senate. I have had my own conversations with senators over there. We are going to get this done, and Democrats are going to deliver for the people. Now, when you say you've had your own conversations with senators over there um, in terms of its likelihood of passing in the Senate, I'm going to ask you what you mean. And you are not going to tell me directly, but please tell me indirectly what you mean by that, because that's the whole enchilada in terms of whether or not this actually becomes law. Well, what I'll say is that the negotiations were taking place over the last five weeks with Senators Manchin and Cinema and the White House. Almost every aspect of this bill has been pre-conference. There are a few things that are not, Rachel, and we just have to be real about that. We haven't, you know, we put paid leave in. Senator Manchin has not agreed to that yet. But I will tell you, there are some phenomenal, strong women senators over there that I hope will be able to convince Senator Manchin that that is the thing to do. But there's hardly anything else that is not pre-conference, not already agreed to. And so um, when, the, when the president said, trust me that I am confident I can get 51 votes, of course, it's his word, along with the fact that these negotiations have been going on. We have had conversations, and I believe that we will have 51 votes in the Senate. How did that do it for you? That's that was it was in it was indirect, but you hit two angles. So technically, that's a bank shot. So I'm I almost <laughs> understand. Well, let me let me ask you more specifically in terms of the items that aren't pre-conferenced, as you say, uh, and you mentioned paid leave as one of them. Are there enough items in that basket, things that basically haven't been pre-agreed to by particularly those those two senators? Are there enough things in that basket that if the Senate went south on all of them, that this bill might become something that ultimately, you and your progressive colleagues would balk from and would decide it wasn't worth passing. It's not going to happen. The framework that President Biden laid out was actually the framework that was the pre-conferenced part, right? Um, now, in addition to that, since the progressives uh, said we were going to wait to be able to get a real agreement, be able to pass both these bills together, we have added uh, prescription drug pricing. Finally, we are going to cut the cost of prescription drugs. We have added, uh, there, there is uh, a piece around immigration that will depend on the parliamentarian that has less to do with the senators and more to do with what the parliamentarian rules. But that is still in our bill. But really, we have been able to add things and keep it to the framework that was originally agreed to. So, I don't believe that um, we will weaken beyond the framework that the president laid out, plus, of course, prescription drug pricing, which was already agreed to. Um, but there's just one or two things. And I think we'll see how that goes. I'm very confident that the senators will do a great job of delivering 51 votes and keeping their side of the bargain, as we have done over here. Well, let, let me also just ask you, you know, you've said a number of times that you you have been the relentless optimist. We've described you as the official optimist of the Rachel Maddow show <laughs> through this process. Um, and I hear it in your voice now and in, in not just optimism, but confidence. But you've also said that, you know, knowing that it's going to work out in the end doesn't mean that it's not going to be rocky, doesn't mean that it's not yes. going to be a rocky road. It's not going to be a difficult right. process. And I know some of that is still ahead. Can I just ask you for an assessment about what the impact of this process has been on you and other progressives, on the Progressive Caucus, on the way that you decided to approach legislating with these narrow margins in this first term of Joe Biden as president. Uh, has this been a, has this rocky process beaten you guys up a little bit? Has it exposed rifts? Has it made things more difficult? Or has it brought the caucus together now that you're actually voting yes on something all, all at the same time? It has really brought the caucus together. And it's not just progressives, Rachel. I will tell you, I was on the floor today and just uh, really taking in all of the people across the caucus, including people outside of the progressive caucus, who were thanking us for holding the line, who were thanking mm -hmm. us for our tactical decisions, who were saying we would never be where we are without you doing what you did. And so I feel incredibly good and strong. And I want to say that people should understand it's not just a few progressives. This was dozens and dozens of people, more than half of the Progressive Caucus that stuck together, held the line, as well as others even outside of that who may not have been quite as vocal. But this was an incredibly powerful moment because, first of all, this is the president's agenda. We said that from the very beginning. We were not asking for something more in this, in this moment than what President Biden was asking for, what he laid out to Congress. That is a transformational progressive agenda. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is 
that courage begets courage. And I think people have forgotten what it looks like to fight, to fight hard for the things that aren't just easy. The bipartisan bill, Rachel, was not easy, but it was easier because it's bipartisan and it carved off things that there's a lot of support for on both sides of the aisle. This is something we will do with 51 Democratic votes. Now, I guarantee you that there's going to be a whole bunch of Republicans who go home after voting no, but they will take the dough and they'll hold it up just like they've been doing with the infrastructure bill. The people that voted no are still bragging about what they did. This is going to benefit people everywhere across the country. And the thing that is different about this, the infrastructure bill is fantastic. We're, we're touting its benefits. But the thing that is different about this is you will wake up. Anyone who's watching this show, you will wake up and you will see your costs, your costs cut. You will see child care. Finally, you'll have child care. You'll see that you're able to afford the cost of housing because there will be more housing, the biggest investment in housing uh, in our country's history. You will know if you're a young person that you're going to have a planet and that we are actually taking real action to reduce carbon emissions. There are so many things in this bill that are about changing how you feel when you wake up in the morning. And that is what we have to do to reach Americans across the country and say, government's got your back. That's what the Build Back Act, Better Act will do.